Hi, if you're watching this video then you've probably got a vehicle that stops for no readily apparent reason. It may or may not start again and you'll find that really frustrating especially when your car is stuck halfway across a really busy intersection. There are a number of uh, causes for that sort of problem. The most common one would be a faulty crank angle sensor or ignition module. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the crank angle sensor um, made by Mitsubishi. Now this particular one has the model number J928 or the model number T1T49971. This crank angle sensor is found in some 2 litre Galants, the ones that have the 4G63 engine, some 2.4 litre Nimbus with the 4G64 engine, and pretty much every 6G72, that's a V6 engine found in the Magno, Verada, Triton, and the Pajero, Shogun, or Montero variants. In the workshop manual, it says that if your crank angle sensor fails, that you need to replace the distributor. Now I went and I talked to the nice Mitsubishi people a couple of years ago and they said that it would cost me in excess of $800 plus freight and plus tax to get one of these distributors. And I kind of coughed at that because I don't have a lot of money. So there has to be some other way of doing it. Fortunately you can order the crank angle sensor, the part J928, from eBay. Now I just did a search a few minutes ago I found that I could have one on my doorstep for less than 100 Australian dollars. That's including postage and tax and everything on my doorstep. Now, to do this, you will need a few tools. I suggest that you have them ready before you start. The first thing you'll need is a PosiDrive screwdriver. So not a Phillips, a PosiDrive, number two. And preferably a normal screwdriver, not one of the ones that uh, takes the, the bit that slips into it, not the magnetic type. You'll need a 7mm socket and a socket drive. You'll need some sealant. Um, I use RTV 700 but you can use whatever you happen to want to use. And finally you're going to need a marker pen. Now before we start several other guides that are on the internet will suggest that you need to pull out the distributor entire and then use your workbench to uh, do all of the work. Now I don't have a workbench, I don't have a vice, I want to be able to leave it in there. The other thing is that if you pull your distributor out of the car then you're going to have to reset the timing. Now if you've got a Pajero, resetting the timing is not something you want to do. It is not a fun and it's not an easy task. So I suggest that if you've got your timing right, leave your distributor in place and do all of the work in place. Uh, in fact, photos that you'll be seeing here show that work being done in situ. Right, first thing that you need to do is remove a battery lead. I remove the positive lead just because I can. The second thing that you'll need to do is mark which spark plug's leads go to which spark plug. Now the firing order in these things goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The leads on the distributor go 1, 3, 5, 2, 6, 4. Don't ask me why Mitsubishi have done it that way, they just have. It's also useful to mark one of your leads so that you know which is which. Now you'll see I've got a little piece of masking tape on the lead that goes to cylinder number 5. And that tells me it goes right next door to one of the fitting screws. Pull out all of your leads, they're only going to be in the way if you leave them there. Next thing to do is to remove the CAS cable, that's the crank angle sensor cable from the front of your distributor. It should just pull off or there will be a little clip to undo and it will pull off. Then remove the distributor cap. There should be two screws, undo those and the distributor cap should, will pop off. The rotor is held on by a 7mm bolt. So you'll need your 7mm socket and your socket drive and that should just come off, no trouble at all. Next thing to do is to remove the cover that's there. It's just a dust cover, two screws and that just pops off. The rotor shaft is held on by a posi drive screw that's right down in the middle there. Now this is why you need a normal posi drive screwdriver, not one of the magnet bit types. The magnet bit types simply won't get down that hole. Now you should see a metal disc. That disc needs to go back in the correct way up. Now I took a marker pen and I wrote a big capital letter T on the top of mine. It makes it really obvious which way is up. You'll find that some of them have a letter E stamped on one side or the other. I don't know which side it will be and it might be different from your vehicle to anybody else's. Much safer, mark the top of yours so that you know which way it is going to go back in place. Now, you remember that you removed the crank angle sensor cable. There's a little metal cover plate around where that plugs in. Now, there are two screws holding that in place and in theory there should be a dust seal right behind that. Now, if your truck is anything like mine, that dust seal is well and truly gone. 
Okay, so once that's gone, then you'll look down and you'll see that there is a metal cover sitting over the top of your crank angle sensor. Now that's held in place by three screws. So undo those three screws, remove the center locator, and then you'll be able to remove the crank angle sensor and the metal cover. Now they won't come out individually, you have to bring them out at the same time. Probably need to do a bit of widgeting around. If yours again is anything like mine, you'll find that it's been sticky glued in place um, to replace that plastic, the rubber seal. It might take a little bit of widgeting, but it will come out pretty quickly. Now while everything is out, it's a good time to give good clean around in the inside of your distributor housing. There's probably going to be some dust and muck in there. Just wipe it all out, it's no big deal. Reassembling is pretty much the reverse of what you've just done. Okay, so what do you do? Put the crank angle sensor with its cover, both at the same time, get them into the right sort of place. Lightly screw it in place. Just put the screws in there just so that it's located, nothing more. Then you want to take your sticky glue and reseal around where the crank angle sensor cable plugs in and put the front cover back in place, just loosely screw. Once you've done that, then go back and put the center locator back in place, tighten down the crank angle sensor cover, tighten up the front cover. If you do it in that order you'll find that the sticky glue will have moved around just a little bit but in that moving it will actually help seal it a little bit better and keep that dust out and you don't want dust in there. Right, install the disc. You remember that uh, you've marked which way is up. That goes back into place. You put the rotor shaft and its screw back in place. You don't have to screw it down too tight. Just snug it up and no more. Dust cover again two screws and it goes back in place. The rotor goes back on Remember it's a 7mm bolt, it's a little bit fiddly to get it exactly in the right place but have some patience and it'll get there and once it's done up finger tight just snug it up with your socket and socket driver and that's all that it will need. Distributor cap goes back on, two screws, crank angle sensor plug goes back on the front. By now that sticky glue would have started to cure off and you won't be too worried about getting it in places that you don't want it to be. Spark plug leads are next. Now of course you've marked them so you know which ones go where. And remember the order? Yep, that's right. 1, 3, 5, 2, 6, 4. No, it doesn't make any sense, but hey, that's just the way it is. Alright, so you've got everything back in place. Pop the battery lead back on. Give it a quick test. And hey, presto, you should be back in business. And see, you didn't even have to replace the distributor.